Nothing hurts more than thinking that everybody in your life hates you and you're saying the wrong thing and all you're doing is failing. Mm -hmm. Yep, so true. <laughs> sad laughter insert here <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna stop talking about this before i get like blasted and like punched in the face in the comments by a bunch of full majors i'm sorry i liked it i like the movie keep music and the schools keep music in the schools please i've not been to a school so i don't know if music is still in there but please keep music in the schools hey hey how y'all doing Hello, the time has come for me to talk about every movie that I watched in the month of August. Let's just jump right in. My notes are here. Um, I watched 18 things this month. Let me fact check that. Yes, 18 movies this month. Some new releases, some rewatches, some old stuff that's new to me because I never watched it before. We have a mix of everything, some good, some bad, some mid. So let's just jump right in. Let's just jump right in. So first up, we started the month with something that ended up being in the more mid slash bad category. And sorry if you love this movie. If you love this movie, I'm questioning you a little bit. Actually, if you love this movie, like I need to hear a whole dissertation about why, because... Anyway, the movie was trap. Sorry, let's jump right into it. The movie was trap. I really thought this movie was gonna be a much more fun time than it was. I remember seeing the trailer for it a few times like in the theater i don't remember which exact movies but i saw the trailer for it at least like three times when i was like watching a movie over the past few months um the trailer looks so good and this just made me realize stop watching trailers stop watching trailers and i usually never watch trailers like unless i'm in a movie theater and like i'm being forced to watch previews that's the only time i really watch trailers for stuff and i need to stop watching trailers because i thought i was getting a whole different movie everything that happened in the trailer did happen in the movie but like low-key the whole trailer is the movie the whole trailer is pretty much the entire movie except for like 30 minutes towards the end that just feel so long and drawn out and just very very bad and because of the trailer i thought this movie was going to be like so fun the concept of it seemed really interesting and i was like so down to watch it and mm -mm. Mm -mm. if you love this movie once again i'm gonna say give me a dissertation on why because i personally would not get it it was just a bit too absurd and ridiculous and honestly this is maybe my fault because i watched old which the same guy that did old did this we all know him and i i'm not even gonna attempt to say his last name because i will butcher it and i'm sorry in advance i watched old that he did and that movie was absolutely hilarious <laughs> another like horror movie thriller vibe i think honestly i might have liked old more than this movie this movie was just like absolutely so absurd and ridiculous and the acting was so weird in this i'm like are we being serious or was this like the satire just goes so far over my head or something i don't understand especially the acting from the main guy which i've seen him in something else before i literally saw him in the bear season three he was frank i think his name was he was literally in one episode one scene i swear but he had better acting in that two to three minute scene that he had in the bear than he had like in this whole movie and because of that two to three minute scene in the bear i know he can act good so like maybe the acting choices that were made for this movie were like on purpose which is a choice um yeah oh and i definitely agree with the people saying that this whole movie was basically just like an album release listening party for his daughter's music <laughs> if you don't know i feel like we all know trap right i don't know but if you don't know trap it's basically it takes place in a concert and like this murder guy they're like setting him up at this concert that he took his daughter to so that they can finally catch the serial killer whatever and um the concert that's happening is literally his daughter m night guy his irl real life daughter is the performer and she's actually an artist in real life and she was actually performing songs from her album during the movie which is at a concert mm-hmm mm -hmm. <laughs> could it be more ridiculous could it be more absurd and then to add on to that she actually gets a role in this movie like she actually starts acting she gets a huge role like for the last like 30 minutes and her acting i don't want to speak on it and i think you can tell by what i'm not saying what i want to say and i'm that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> I did hear something else though. Somebody was like, you know what, M. Night, he's made so many good movies. He's like already set as like one of like a really great like horror movie guy, whatever, whatever. People are like, oh, at this point, he can have a bit of fun, do stupid things, do bad movies, and like you're still considered like one of the greats. If he just wants to make some stuff to make some stuff because he's already like set as like a really good filmmaker, freaking do what you gotta do. But the fact that he basically made this movie for his daughter's album release. <laughs> kind of grosses me out a bit and that's all i'm gonna say on that we're done talking about trap 
thank you <laughs> next up number two i watched adventures in babysitting did that just unlock a memory for you did you forget this movie existed yeah because i kind of did so basically at the beginning of this month i planned to do a sabrina carpenter filmography watching video but um i completely i completely scrapped that video but i had already watched this movie before i scrapped that video so i do have to talk about it here it's literally nothing to say about the movie simple decom it's a mid decom definitely not the best decom because that's lemonade mouth but like for what it is it's a perfectly fine movie perfectly fine movie if you're a kid give it a watcher i will say i was in fact 15 years old watching it but that's okay i think this was like the last decom that i was like okay closing that chapter of my life we're moving away from disney channel we're moving away from decoms bye bye now you know but yeah rewatching it perfectly fine movie nothing to write home about yeah that's it <laughs> next up number three finally we're moving into good stuff i watch cuckoo uh, cuckoo was so good i watched it a really long time ago at this point because this is the third movie i watched this month but oh just thinking about it like talking about it uh, just puts a smile on my face i love that movie and it's a horror movie i didn't expect to like love it that much i was very scared to go watch this movie because it was a horror movie and like i didn't know how graphic we were getting it's a rated r one so like you know it could go with the graphics and the goriness too it could go either way when it's rated r so i was a little nervous a bit nervous but wow 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 this movie's so good stop what you're doing and go watch this movie please please like i honestly can't believe how much i love this movie because like i said i don't usually love horror movies and thriller movies but this is just it was just too good it was simply just too good and i agree with the iowa debris comment when she was talking about this movie specifically and she was like i'm simply too seated like i'm simply too seated and i in fact was seated and now i'm simply i simply love it <laughs> like after i watched this movie it was on my mind for like a week after and i really really wanted to go see it again but i couldn't because even though like i really loved it there were still just some moments in it that were a bit too gory a bit too graphic for me and i just i just know like i wouldn't have a good time watching it again in the movie theaters but once it comes out like on streaming services like oh i'm i will be tapped in because then i can just like skip ahead at the parts i don't really want to see and stuff like that i love that movie but the goriness was like there were some moments i'm like oh i never need to see you again you know what i mean but the overall movie the overall plot everything else about that movie so good so good so good when i watched it i was definitely like scared and confused like 80 percent of the time but it was all in a very 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 good way i overall loved the story of the movie and what the plot was and when all of the dots like finally connected and everything just like finally like clicked into place it was so interesting and i was just like oh my god like this concept is so freaking good maybe i am a horror movie thriller girl <laughs> i don't know about all that actually but like this movie i don't know it's it's an anomaly for me personally also this movie wasn't like inherently scary like with like jump scares and like all those kinds of scary things like that but it was just very unsettling it was so unsettling and for me that's like a thousand times more scary when it's unsettling and i'm just like where is this going i'm confused what is this like music who's that beast in the background i'm scared of you like lingering in the shadows what's what's going on there but it doesn't take away how freaking good and how much i actually really love the movie though even though i don't like being unsettled i don't like being spooked and ooked but i don't know this movie i don't know this movie is just genuinely like an anomaly for me somehow also this movie was shot so beautifully and i just love the way it looked like the coloring and stuff it was just such a pretty movie if that makes sense <laughs> and it was a bit funny too which i loved and hunter schaefer let's take a moment of silence for her because she in this was good <laughs> does that make sense i don't know her in this was really good there we go there's a the sentence there it is her in this was really really good quite perfect um a need to see her in more things she was in kind of kindness but like she was she wasn't really in kind of kindness so yeah it's nice seeing her like lead a movie keep my girl leading movies please okay and the final thing that i want to say before we move on from this movie is something that you only understand if you saw this movie and i'm not going to explain it further so i'm sorry if you didn't see the movie but the relationship between hunter shaver's character and her sister perfect to me so perfect to me and did i cry multiple times because of their relationship mm -hmm. in fact i did cry in fact i did cry one specific moment i cried at i'm not going to talk about it please just go watch this movie if you haven't seen it and if you have seen it let's talk about it in the comments but there was one specific moment tears streaming down my face it was actually crazy a horror movie making me cry please it was so good okay i'm done talking about it we're moving on now because that, that none of that made sense if you hadn't seen the movie please go watch that movie go watch that movie mm -hmm. next up number four another solid movie i saw this month Dee Dee. 
I saw Didi. This movie was so good and at the same time it also hurt me so bad. I was actually startled by the amount of emotions I felt while watching this movie. Like I thought I was kind of just going into like a fun-ish coming of age story vibe. Maybe some emotions here and there because like every coming of age story has like emotional moments to it depending on like certain relationships with like family, friends, whatever, whatever. But there was just this movie just made me feel all of the emotions. Good, bad, ugly, sad. This movie had a bit of everything for me. There's this one thing that I wrote down in my notes that I just need to read verbatim because it perfectly sums up the entirety of what this movie is. So here's that. This movie embodied the vibe of being a 13 slash 14 year old and just trying so hard to fit in and make friends and find your place and your people and also trying hard to say the right thing and do the right thing around these people that you want to date or that you want to be friends with or look cool in front of so perfectly. This movie embodied all of those vibes so perfectly. Yeah, this movie just did all of that so perfectly. It was actually mind boggling to me a bit and I felt so much secondhand embarrassment throughout most parts of this movie like so much more than the usual amount of secondhand embarrassment I feel for like characters in movies you know what I mean but I think it's because I just felt so much like him so much like Chris the main character Dee Dee I just felt like him like nothing hurts more than just feeling like you're doing everything wrong and everyone hates you and like you're just trying so hard to be friends with someone or just like fit in in like a certain kind of crowd or just have friends have somebody that kind of cares about you or just like try to date someone or something like nothing hurts more than like trying so hard and just feeling like everyone hates you and like feeling like you're coming up short and feeling like you're failing over and over again and that was him and i am him because same and he was like in eighth grade i think he was like in eighth grade going into ninth grade in this movie it was like the summer before high school started and i felt like that most of like middle school going into high school high school itself and i still feel like that to this day sometimes mm -hmm. nothing hurts more than thinking that everybody in your life hates you and you're saying the wrong thing and all you're doing is failing mm -hmm. yep so true <laughs> sad laughter insert here <laughs> like nothing hurts worse than all of that when all you want is just to have friends and all you want is just to feel accepted Mm hmm yeah this was just a really really good coming of age movie love the relationship between him and his sister love the relationship between him and his mom and then also the little dynamics between the mom and the mother-in-law the grandma that was interesting too loved it all um yeah Mm -hmm. that's that let's move on now <laughs> next up number five i watched in the mood for love which honestly long time coming first time watching i've known about this movie literally since like my freshman year of college because one of my friends film major friends watched this movie loved this movie wrote like a whole paper essay on this movie talked about it a little bit like i got some of what the um summary synopsis of it was and i was like oh i want to watch that one day this august was that day five years later basically so yeah finally got around to watching it and i was really excited to watch it because everything that I heard about this movie I swear I was like oh I'm gonna love this my friends love it the concept sounds really cool to me I think this is gonna be a good vibe um did not love it did not love it but I did really like it <laughs> I did like the movie just didn't love it though okay let's, let's first talk about the things I really really did enjoy about it I love the premise and the plot it was a beautiful movie beautifully shot the vibes were immaculate in this the cinematography beautiful really good in that sense but it was just like the pacing was a little weird this was a little weird in this one like the beginning felt like really like we were moving the beginning until we got to the part where they found out that their spouses are cheating on them was moving like really fast we were like going so fast we were cutting to scenes that i was like wait how much time has passed where are we in this like time frame of things that are happening are we a month ahead are we a week ahead is this just the next day i was getting a bit confused we were just moving like so fast and i was getting a bit confused of like information that we were learning because like one thing would happen in one scene and then the next scene it was like three thousand other things happening Happened, and I'm like wait when did those things happen oh in this like in between that scene and this scene and I'm like okay let me catch up let me catch on here we go okay got it so yeah the beginning like everything leading up to the main characters finding out that their spouses are like cheating on them with each other's spouses does that make sense I don't know but yeah everything leading up to that was moving really fast and then that middle part ish until like towards the ending ish we start slowing down a bit I was catching on I was like okay I get what we're doing I understand what's happening we like slowed down a bit but wasn't like slow we were just moving at a normal pace which was good but then the last like 20 minutes of the movie was really slow and I was like okay 
we can maybe pack it up a little bit. We're moving a bit too slow. We can maybe pack it up. We can maybe pick it up. But at the same time, for what was like happening and the emotional turmoil we were like going through on both sides, both ends of like the characters' vibes, it did make sense why we were kind of moving a bit slow, but still it was a bit slow. <laughs> also, it wasn't until after I watched this movie that I learned that it was a part of like a loose trilogy. This was like the second in the trilogy. And yeah, I didn't know that. So that was interesting information to learn. Maybe one day I'll go about watching the other two movies but I did read the synopsis and like the plot of like what happens in them because I was just a bit too curious. So I do know what happens, but maybe one day I'll get around to watching it. I don't know. Don't hold me to that one. But yeah, I'm gonna stop talking about this before I get like blasted and like punched in the face in the comments by a bunch of film majors. I'm sorry. I liked it. I liked the movie. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna stop talking about it now. I'm gonna stop. We're moving. On. Let's just, yeah, let's move on. Okay, yeah. Six, number six, I watched School of Rock. First time watching that, that's probably blasphemy to say because this movie is like a classic, I think. I don't know. I think the people, I think the general public really adore this movie i finally got around to watching it and i really really liked it i really really liked that movie i'm surprised actually how much i like that movie for an early 2000s comedy movie i fully expected a lot more like problematic jokes and like some things that maybe we shouldn't be saying this day and age in 2024 but honestly this movie had like no problematic things really in it this movie truly stands to the test of time like there was nothing really problematic about this movie and i was very surprised especially like for an early 2000s comedy movie that was pg-13 like it wasn't even it's not even a pg kids movie like it's pg-13 so i was very surprised about that but like wholesomely pleasantly surprised <laughs> also just like the overall plot and like the vibes of this movie were just really really good love it keep music and the schools keep music in the schools please i've not been to a school so i don't know if music is still in there but please keep music in the schools if they are still there now please keep music in the schools and if not there anymore bring music back to the schools bring music back to the schools <laughs> thank you next up number seven i watched cat person you probably never heard of that movie, have you? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I only watched this movie because the person that wrote Bodies, Bodies, Bodies wrote the short story that this movie was based on. Did that make sense? I gave like very much like, oh my brother's uncle's sister daughter energy, but I hope that made sense. So yeah, I watched the movie because of that. And also the premise sounded kind of interesting too. Also the girl that was in Coda, she was the main girl in this. Also Greg from Successions in this, or what I personally know him from, Minutemen. Mm -hmm, Minutemen. Did that bring back a fun little memory for you? I hope it did because that movie's great. Also from the Geraldine Vishwanathan. I hope I said that right. I'm so sorry if I didn't because I really love her. Um, She's also in this movie and yeah. So I decided to watch it for those reasons and um, it was okay. It was all right. It was definitely like the epitome of like girlhood and womanhood. Saying sorry all the time, feeling like it's your job to spare men's feelings, being scared of saying certain things for fear of being murdered or being physically attacked, daydreaming that the worst thing ever possible is going to happen to you while you're like walking at nighttime and blah 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 talking to a man blah 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 this movie was the basically the epitome of all of that and even though i do feel very seen by that i just don't think i really like this movie all that much it was started feeling really long towards the end and i'm like okay we can pack it up we can wrap this up please we're dragging things out a bit too much anyway though this movie just felt a bit long and i think we needed to shorten it a bit because the beginning was kind of good still a bit slow at times but the ending the last like 30 minutes Mm -mm, way too long way too long and then after i watched this movie i read the short story that it's based on it's free you can go read it same title and it's funny because the short where the short story ended off at was right where i thought maybe the movie should have ended off at where the short story ended there was an extra 30 minutes in the movie and i was like that's where we were kind of doing a bit too much being a bit too slow being a bit too we didn't need all that. So seeing where the short story ended i'm like oh they should have like wrapped things up around there but yeah this movie was perfectly fine <laughs> nothing else i need to say about this movie go read the short story if you want you get the same vibes basically so yeah number eight i watched warm bodies <laughs> ask me why i did that person i don't know i think because nicholas holt and i kind of like nicholas holt and then also when i googled this movie i found that it came out on my birthday on the year that it came out 2012 or 11 i can't remember now but it did come out on my birthday so i was like oh my gosh let me finally get around to watching this and i think i had always kind of wanted to watch this movie i feel like i remember maybe seeing trailers or something back when it was coming out but i never got around to watching it finally did perfectly mid movie if i had watched it when it came out i I think I could have like a good like nostalgic feel to this movie but because I didn't watch it when it came out this movie quite literally felt like nothing to me but I really did like because it's a zombie movie I really did like how much the zombies were like humanized in this 
that was something that I don't think I've ever seen in like a zombie movie or zombie plot TV show, whatever. So that was kind of interesting to see. And I really liked that a lot. Also, it took me way too long to realize this was kind of like a Romeo and Juliet vibe. Like her name was Julie and his name was R. And like the vibes were like perfectly Romeo and Juliet. Like he was a zombie, she was a normal girl. How would they ever be together? You know, so yeah. Spoiler alert though, they both don't die at the end. So a little bit different than Romeo and Juliet. Anyway, that's all I need to say on that one. Thank you. Next up, number nine, I watched Ella Enchanted. Mm -hmm. And I had a great time watching that. That is literally my movie. I live by, breathe by. One of the few movies from my childhood that I can still live by and breathe by personally. And I love that movie. It's funny because the last time I had rewatched that movie, maybe like 2020 or something, I remember like not really liking it. So it kind of like, I was like, oh no, I did the thing where I watch a movie from my childhood and I hate it, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay. Let me try again. And I tried again now and it hit perfectly. Mm -hmm, it hit perfectly. I think this movie has broken its way right back into my top 10, maybe even my top five. I might have to reassess my top five if I really truly believe that, but it's definitely in my top 10, definitely easily in my top 10 movies. Perfect like Cinderella retelling, but then at the same time, like when I really think about it, it's not super Cinderella retelling-ish. Like yes, we have the stepsisters. Yes, we have the evil mother, but her dad's not dead. And then it's a more magical, like she's being forced to like listen to her stepsisters sisters and stuff also i just really love the themes within this movie which is a lot of themes that you would not expect to see in a child kid movie like we're literally talking about segregation and slavery that's crazy but i love that so ella enchanted go give that a watch also simply Anne hathaway's in it need i say more Anne hathaway's in this and i don't remember the main guy's name and i don't know what he's doing now but he's cute too so ella enchanted you have broken your way back into my heart baby this was a really great rewatch and i'm so glad that i did it mm-hmm yeah number 10 i watched the map of tiny perfect things this is another rewatch i watched it i think it was whenever it came out like in 2021 or something it was on amazon prime like an amazon prime movie and i liked it i think i liked it this time more than i liked it that first time but i also really really liked it the first time i watched it too Catherine newton's in this my girl my girl hope she's doing well the boy in this is cool too i think i know him from like one other thing that i cannot think of right now but that's okay i did in fact cry multiple times while watching this movie and it's it's not even like a super super sad movie except for like one aspect of it that i'm not gonna mention because i don't want to spoil the vibes of it for you if you ever decide to watch it but yeah i was crying even outside of that one aspect of it that is a sad part so yeah really good movie i'm glad i randomly decided to rewatch this one <laughs> next up 11 and 12 we will group these two together because it is easy for me to talk about them together Sorry. I watched The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 and I had the same thoughts about both of them so that's why we're just going to talk about them together. I've never seen these before which might be really crazy to say because I love Emma Stone and I really really like Andrew Garfield so I don't know why it's taking me so long to finally watch these two movies to finally watch his Spider-Man because I also really like Spider-Man too and I love me some Peter Parker so I don't know why it's taking me so long to watch it but I finally did it and um perhaps I should have let it stay in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me talk about what I thought about these movies. This might be blasphemy for me to say, and I'm probably offending a whole group of TASM lovers, but I did not like these movies. I'm sorry. I didn't like them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The vibes just felt a bit off and i just really didn't like the plots of either of the movies and i didn't really like the pacing of either of the movies. They felt so long and i'm sorry, but Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker I'm sorry, but I didn't like him. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And maybe it's because I just love Tom Holland Spider-Man and I just love Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming, the most special movie to me. I freaking love it. And maybe I just love the way Tom Holland's Peter Parker is. I just love the way he does Peter Parker. I I'm sorry, I just really didn't like Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker. He just felt a bit too cool, a bit too cool for school. And I'm like, where's like the nerdy Peter? Where's like the loser Peter? Like he was a bit too smooth and a bit too like cool, like especially coming in with like with like the Gwen stuff why were you a bit too smooth with her like the Peter Parker I know and love he is fumbling he's fumbling bags he gets the girl at the end of the day of course he does but he has to fumble the bag a few times like there wasn't enough awkwardness to his Peter Parker which I love about Tom Holland's Peter Parker especially in Spider-Man Homecoming when he finally gets the courage to ask Liz to Homecoming his like awkward little flustered vibe and then he's just like so happy about it that's my Peter Parker that's my Peter Parker I'm sorry Andrew Garfield and I'm sorry for the people that love Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker and like honestly I don't know the comics 
Parks and all that stuff. So maybe his Peter Parker is technically the more accurate Peter Parker. You can tell me that, sure. But just for like my personal preference and just like for what the movies are, I have to go with Tom Holland simply, I'm sorry. But yeah, these movies, um, I didn't like them. And before I offend more people, let me simply move on now. Thank you. Number 13, probably one of the greatest rewatches I had this month and it is Okja. Okja baby, perfect, perfect movie. I love it so much. This is my third time watching it. First time I watched this movie, I think it was like 2019. I had a good time. Can't fully remember what exactly happened, but I just know I really liked it. Second time, I remember exactly what happened when I watched this movie. I remember exactly where I was when I watched this movie, but I will not be talking about it. I think it was literally only like a few months or maybe even like weeks after I watched it that first time. It was like also 2019 or like very early 2020 that I watched it. And then this is my third time watching it, literally four years later. Perfect movie, it's too good. Good. third time watching just as good as the first time watching still a perfect movie to me still hits in all the right places i of course did cry multiple times during this movie the relationship between mija and okja is just too perfect to me literally how i feel about my cat like i would go across the world to go save him if somebody took him away from me simply i would have to easily like, i understand her i feel her i yeah this movie's perfect this movie's great love it love it bong joon ho love you too hope you're doing well <laughs> number 14 i watched abigail this is actually the second time i watched abigail this is one of those horror movies that we don't need to rewatch. Rewatching it the second time i was like yeah i don't need to be rewatching this i think i was literally like on my phone a lot during this movie like during this rewatch except for like certain like little funny parts because this movie is quite funny which i love about that but the overall plot and like vibe of this movie like i think i enjoyed it more the first time which makes sense because like knowing where everything's gonna happen in the movie especially a movie that's like kind of like clear cut there's no like secret things that like i picked up during my second watch it's just very like this is what the movie is this movie is just very straightforward and very clear cut so like rewatching it was like genuinely nothing special and then overall like rewatching this movie i kind of have the same feelings as i did when i first watched it this movie just feels a bit too long the last like 20 to 30 minutes of it it just feels very unneeded and it just felt like we were just like doing a bunch of things and like creating more problems to just make the movie a bit longer and to like drag it out a bit like, we were just doing stuff just to do stuff to make this movie longer and that was a bit annoying and also the ending itself don't really enjoy that that much we love final girl energy but eh, 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 oof, i don't know and i'm gonna move on now <laughs> i'm gonna stop talking about that now bye 15 i watched may december Mm -hmm. finally got around to watching that this has been on my list since like january maybe january or like even december <laughs> may december yeah it's been on my list for a really long time since like the oscars because i remember people were mad because charles melton was snubbed he should have got like a supporting actor nomination or something for his role in this so i've been interested because i actually really like charles melton and i was interested to really watch this movie because of that but i just was never in the right mindset and mind space to watch this movie because i know it was going to be a very uncomfortable and unsettling and intense watch so i wanted to be in a good mindset and mind place is that even a word when i watched this movie so i finally felt good enough to watch this movie so i did headspace that's the word <laughs> overall i was very interested during the entire movie to like see where things were going and like what like outcomes and solutions we would end this movie on but we kind of didn't really have any like outcomes or like solutions or any like groundbreaking this is what this movie means kind of a moment which was like a bit weird and maybe this was just like what that movie was supposed to be but i don't know that just made it fall a bit like flat for me because i'm like so what was the point of this movie if we're not gonna have any sort of like condemning of the actions it <laughs> did or something i don't know it just felt like a bit pointless but like maybe that was the point but i do hate when that is the point i do hate when a movie's like at the end of the day there is no point i kind of hate that i just feel like this movie needed more and i wanted so much more from it and right where it felt like we were like starting to pick up and like get somewhere like get to some sort of breakthrough or something the movie ended and that really sucked also random note the score in this was very jarring and like unsettling and i really did not like it at the end of the day i do truly understand and get completely the people's outrage for charles melton not getting a supporting actor nom for this because i feel like he was really really great in this actually but at the same time i think i understand why he didn't get it because he did didn't get the chance to do what I think he really could have done if he was given the scene to do it. I wish we could have tapped more into his character and like what that character was literally going through. I wish we could have tapped into more scenes of him like really processing or like talking about what happened to him because we know it like messed up his brain chemistry what happened to him and if you don't know what this movie is about it's basically he was a seventh grader she was 35 or something they had a love affair she went to jail for a bit she got pregnant when she got out of jail they got married had a couple more kids too it was just 
Mm. That's why I knew I needed to like be in a really good headspace before I watched the movie because very uncomfortable watch Very uncomfortable watch I wish we could have happened to more scenes of him like processing or like getting to that breakthrough moment of him being like This is a little weird because we were like slowly getting there We were slowly getting to like him finally like waking up in a sense of like mm, we never talk about what happened to me and also it was very obvious that he had like a lot of ptsd from that because he would be like i really don't remember a lot of us first getting together and she's like you seduced me he's like i really don't remember a lot of it because he was a child because he was a child of course you don't remember and also the ptsd like the trauma blocking of it all oh i don't i can't even i don't even want to get into it as much as i want to get into it we're not gonna do that but i just wish we could have had more scenes of like him finally having his breakthrough moment because we were slowly getting there but then we did didn't get the outcome of that or like the solution of that or like the payoff of that because the movie ended and also there was like this little side little plot moment of him like texting this girl on like facebook and it seemed like there was like maybe some sort of affair gonna happen there but we never got to see it so that really annoyed me as well overall a mid movie i thought we would lead somewhere different and we didn't i feel like this movie kind of just ended with no point to it which sucks because i feel like this movie could have said something but it didn't Okay, that's that. Anyway, we're moving on now and I'm gonna try to speed this up because I've been talking for way too long. Okay, yeah. 16, I watched Beast Beast. And I solely watched this movie because the sister from Dee Dee, Shirley Chen, is in this movie. So I wanted to watch it because of her because I really liked her and Dee Dee, even though like, she really didn't have that much of a role. But she was still really cool in it. And I really, like I said, I really liked their brother-sister relationship in that. That was like an interesting dynamic to see. So yeah, I was like, what else is she in? And I found this movie. And first things first, I need to say that she was perfectly, absolutely amazing in this movie. Outdid everyone. Her acting, perfect. She, perfect. Everything that she had to do in this this movie was absolutely perfect i love her and i wish her the bestest bestest acting career miss shirley chen i am now your number one fan and i am now your number one supporter i hope you do the bestest things ever you were great you're awesome absolutely perfect in this okay now on to the movie itself basically this movie is like 90 percent exposition and some like rising action and then the last 10 percent is the climax falling action and then the resolution all in like the last like 20 minutes of this movie but I don't, I didn't necessarily hate that. Even though it did feel like when is like the thing gonna happen, you know, the inciting incident or like whatever you wanna call it. When are we gonna get to that? But then at the same time, I actually didn't really mind that though because I did like learning about these three characters and none of the movie was boring by any means. Like I wasn't feeling bored. The characters were actually interesting and like learning about them was really interesting. So I didn't mind the mainly exposition aspect of this movie. Also, this movie is quite short too. Like I think it's only an hour and 26 minutes. So there was wasn't really a point where I was like okay this is feeling like we're dragging out something that does not need to be dragged out no it was actually very very good and when we got to like the climax and like all of that happening in the last 20 minutes I actually really really enjoyed it and this is probably the first movie where I'm like wow the last like 30 minutes did not feel draggy and did not feel really slow once the thing happened in this movie this movie literally ran it started speed running everything not in a bad way like there was some montage moments it did feel like some things were rushed but like not rushed in a bad way we were hitting the points as we needed to hit them does that make sense probably not <laughs> i loved the ending of this movie genuinely genuinely love the ending of this movie once again shirley chen acting down so perfect i don't really want to talk about what exactly happens in this movie because you should actually go watch it because it's really good but yeah once we get to like that climax moment and then everything else happening it was just Mm -hmm. those last 20 minutes probably the best like final 20 minutes of a movie that i've seen in a really long time which is really interesting to say and then i found out after i watched this movie that it's based on a short film which i then watched after i watched this movie and shirley chen is also in the short film like she's the main girl in the short film like she's the main girl in this film the short film is definitely a slightly different vibe like what we do in the short film is not what we do in this movie the fact that there's like a theater slash drama program is like kind of like the only like overlapping between the short film and the actual movie but yeah yeah, I really liked it once again Shirley Chen perfect acting in the short film as well she was phenomenal it's crazy once again I will say it Shirley Chen your number one fans right here I'm rooting for all the things for you I hope you're in everything that you would like to be in mm -hmm. next up 17 I watched Shrek the third I don't know why you told me why I watched it I don't know I can't tell you the last time I watched this movie I think the last time I watched this movie was probably like when it came out in whatever year that was but that's the last time I watched it I do remember I tried to watch it before because I remember really liking it when I was a kid but it was literally nowhere now it's on Peacock so I finally got to watch it after so many years of not being able to watch it I guess it's definitely not the strongest Shrek film like that's obviously Shrek 2 but this one is still very fun and I did really enjoy it and yeah Shrek 
perfect movies except for the last one shrek forever after can burn in a fire but shrek one two and three mm-hmm mm-hmm yes and maybe shrek forever after is actually good but i just remember the time when i watched it i did not like that movie maybe i'll rewatch it one day though and see if i still don't like it but personally i don't need to do that anytime soon <laughs> <laughs> Next up and finally number 18. I watched everything everywhere all at once. This one was a rewatch Of course, I've seen this movie before you're crazy if you don't think i've ever seen this movie before The movie theater by me did an imax showing of it So I went to that and it was really good I have been wanting to rewatch this movie because I saw it like right when it came out back in 2022 Saw it in the theaters great movie great time didn't fat cry perfect movie blah blah Knew from the second it ended I was like this is the oscar movie This is the oscar movie and recently I was like oh I kind of I want to rewatch this soon but there's just something about this movie that feels like i need to see you on big screen so then when the theater by me was doing an imax showing of it i was like i simply have to go and see this on big screen so i did and it was a great time perfect movie there's nothing that i can say about this movie that hasn't already been said about this movie but let's just reiterate it once again because it's been two years and why not talk about how great this movie is perhaps in my humblest of opinions this movie is one of the most deserved oscar best picture wins in recent years and i will say that with my full chest and i hope we all can humbly personally perfectly agree on that like everything about this movie is just so insanely good the acting the editing the story itself the visual effects quite literally everything about this movie is absolutely perfect and stunning and crazy and good and i love it and the fact that it did a nice little sweep not a clean sweep at the oscars but it did what it needed to do best picture best actress best supporting actor best supporting actress best directing best editing i don't think it got visual effects i don't know i think that's seven and i'm only counting six so I think I'm a little confused. I think I'm missing something, but also it's one in the morning and my brain's dying and I don't feel like doing research right now. So I think I'm just going to end that, end that there. And I'm also just gonna end this video there because that was the last movie that I saw. Thank you. Thank you for watching. This was what I watched in August. <laughs> I'm so tired. That was what I watched in August. Thank you for watching this. I hope this made sense. I started feeling a little bit delirious there at the end. I still feel a little delirious right now because I'm very tired and I just want to stop talking and go to sleep. Simply, please let me go to sleep. Please, please let me stop talking. Would you like to see this for September? I would imagine the crowd is going to scream a resounding yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. Honestly, I kind of want to do something a little bit different for September, and I want to take requests from the audience. Give me some recommendations, give me some movies to watch, and I'll watch them for September. And then I'll talk about it in the next monthly recap, movie recap video. I'm gonna stop talking now. Thank you for watching. Bye! I need to go to sleep. I need to go to sleep so bad. Please. <laughs>